Hello everyone, welcome to the live stream. So I thought I wanted to do something kind of fun today and kind of just talk about uh, the Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth, answer any questions you guys have. This is an absolutely improvised live stream. I just want you to know that, so um, feel free to interrupt at any time to ask about the Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth. Uh, but for those of you in the chat, um, please be aware that this live stream is all about the two Cunard queens. So let's try to stay on that topic instead of going off about, you know, trains or anything else on my channel and stuff like that. This is only about the Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth today. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Hello, Tyler. Hello, um, uh, Alicja Merrick. Uh, I think I pronounced that correctly. I'm sorry, I am trying with that one. Hello, Ozzy. Hello, Thomas. Um, okay, so kind of the first thing I wanted to show you guys, let me just pull this up on screen here. Where is it? Ah, there. So I have here a diagram of the Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth. I kind of just photoshopped this together. It's not really like a, you know, an official kind of thing, but actually let me move that out of the way because it's kind of sitting in the middle of my, my screen. There we go. So uh, you can kind of see that uh, the Queen Mary is slightly larger than the Queen Elizabeth. If we look at, um, I'm sorry, no, it's opposite. Queen, uh, Queen Elizabeth is slightly larger than Queen Mary. I'm sorry. So let me kind of zoom in on the facts here for Queen Mary. So she was launched in 1934. Her length overall is 1,019 and a half feet or 310.7 meters. She has a width or beam, as you might call it, of 118 feet, 35.9 meters, and a gross tonnage of 80,774. So if we go down over to Queen Elizabeth, we can see she was launched in 1938, so four years later. Um, she has a length overall of 1,029 and a half feet. So that's literally, what was it, 1,019? So She's 10 feet longer, exactly 10 feet longer than Queen Mary. Uh, that's 313.7 meters, by the way. And she has a beam of 118 feet, uh, which is the same as Queen Mary, 35.9 meters, and a gross tonnage of 83,673. Of course, these gross tonnages were right after they were launched. Queen Mary eventually increased her gross tonnage to 81,400, I want to say. Uh, Queen Elizabeth, I think she mainly kept the same gross tonnage, but that made Queen Elizabeth uh, the largest ship in the world when she was launched. So zooming back out to the whole diagram, um, you can really see that when you look at the two ships from profile, they don't look much different in terms of the hull. And when I say the hull, I don't mean the superstructure. The superstructure is what goes above the hull. It's everything painted white, essentially. Um, but when you look at their hull shape, it's not too different. Hold on, let me... Um, one more. There we go. So it's not too different. Um, you can kind of see the Queen Mary's shape here, but you'll notice the biggest difference between the two ships is actually... Uh, the bow, the Queen Elizabeth's uh, extra 10 feet of length is really just in the bow. And part of the reason why they gave her that extra length, well, first of all, it was, it's very, it's usual to make, uh, well, let's just say sister ships. It's usual to make sister ships uh, larger by dimension and by gross tonnage than the previous ship. Um, the Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth are not considered true sister ships. But that the interesting thing about them, a lot of people don't know this, but both ships were originally intended to be sister ships. That was the original intention in 1929 when, you know, when Cunard approached uh, John Brown about constructing these two ships. So they designed the Queen Mary, and the thought was that was that the Queen Mary's design would carry over into the Queen Elizabeth eventually. That was the original thinking and that uh, and that they wouldn't have to change too much. Uh, but as it turned out, the Queen Mary, which was built first, and maybe I should pause for a second and mention that 
you might have noticed that a lot of sister ships are built together. So the Olympic class, for instance, two ships were built at a time. So Olympic first, Titanic next, and then it would have been Titanic and then, and then Britannic uh, once Olympic was launched. Well, there wasn't any room at John Brown to construct two ships at the same time. They only had room enough to build just one queen ship. So the Queen Elizabeth was constructed first. She was launched in 1934. And in the time that she went into service in 1936, they were already laying down the hull of Queen Elizabeth. And during that time with Queen Mary, they started making some noticeable changes to the, to the design of Queen Elizabeth. And the reason why was because Queen Mary, while she was a very strong and well-built ship, there were things they wanted to tweak, some things that they felt could have been improved. Um, before we even get into what was improved, it must be stated that I, I it is not currently, to my knowledge, uh, that Queen Elizabeth was meant to be ever just as powerful and fast as Queen Mary. I think that Queen Elizabeth was always meant to be the one that travels the same speed, the same, uh, I should say, operating speed, uh, service speed, as some people might call it, as the Queen Mary. But she didn't need to to capture the blue ribbon. That was not necessary for Queen Elizabeth. That's not what, what she was originally designed for. She was originally designed to be more efficient. So right off the bat, I don't believe that Cunard had ever intended to put as many boilers on Queen Elizabeth as they had for Queen Mary. But we can see if I kind of zoom in here, just one more notch and kind of take this to the center. You can see the difference between the two ships' engineering spaces. While they did have identical uh, steam turbine engines, they did not have identical boiler spaces. Now, this blueprint on the bottom here, I did this kind of on my own because I do not own a high quality blueprint of Queen Elizabeth's engineering spaces. For some reason that is really hard to find in high quality. The best I could find was a picture of a picture <laughs> of a picture of that. So I used that and tried to draw it out the way I believe she was laid down. If I can ever find a book or something that really reveals it a lot more, I will. But we can see that Queen Mary she has 27 Yarrow boilers, three Scotch boilers, whereas Queen Elizabeth has 12 Yarrow boilers. Now, Queen Mary was originally designed to have a total of 27 double-ended Scotch boilers. That's right. These three up here, there was originally intended to be 27 of them. The whole ship would have just, have, would have just had them. But while they were constructing Queen Mary, they... Cunard had, for whatever reason, decided that they would instead go with Yarrow boilers, most likely because they were way more fuel efficient than Scotch boilers. And so they ended up purchasing about 12 of the largest ones and then another 12 of the slightly smaller ones. The dimensions I don't have on me at the moment, but there really were two different sets of sizes of of us uh, of yarrow boilers they ended up only going with three scotch boilers the three scotch boilers were meant to to service the kitchens and the guest amenities of the ship the scotch boilers were probably best suited for that anyway so the yarrow boilers ended up going into those spaces and the yarrow boilers even though they were larger by dimension they actually weighed a little bit less than the scotch boilers now, the difference was calculated to be imperceptible to the ship, but in the end, that would be one of the few reasons that actually made the Queen Mary roll slightly more than was expected. Whenever she would roll at sea, which all ships roll at sea, she rolled a bit more easily. It took a little bit less effort than was originally planned to get the Queen Mary to kind of roll and pitch around. But uh, I imagine, though, that 
that kind of thing was fixed with Queen Elizabeth. But you might be wondering, why does Queen Elizabeth only have 12 Yarrow boilers? That seems like a significant decrease. Well, first of all, to achieve Queen Mary's high speeds, the last few knots that she would produce in speed, you know, towards the highest amount, were really difficult to get. They really had to push the the boilers to their max and really get a high steam pressure going. A great volume of steam was consumed by the Queen Mary's engines in order to achieve those last few knots of high speed. Queen Elizabeth was not meant to compete for the Blue Riband. They just wanted her to be a fast ship that can keep up with the Queen Mary. The Queen Mary's service speed was designated to be around 28 or 29 knots. And so Queen Elizabeth was only designed for that service speed. She was not designed for racing uh, for the ribbons, just like the Queen Mary was. That's why they only put in her what she needed in terms of boilers. Now, to my understanding, the Yarrow boilers that were put in Queen Elizabeth are slightly bigger than the biggest ones put in Queen Mary. Again, I don't have the dimensions right here in front of me, but that is my understanding of it. So, but yes, so the Queen Elizabeth's Yarrow boilers, they still produce the same pressure to my understanding, 425 PSI of pressure. It's just that with only 12 of them, she produced a slightly less volume, as you can imagine, than all of Queen Mary's uh, 24 Yarrows. It is for that reason that Queen Elizabeth could not achieve the same speeds that Queen Mary could. It just wasn't possible. She could she could do her service speed, which is what she was meant for, 28, 29 knots of service speed. And sometimes she could go a little bit over that, especially if the current and the and the winds were at her favor. Of course, she could go a little bit faster. But essentially, as her previous captains have said, full speed on Queen Elizabeth was full speed with nothing held back. She just wasn't as fast as the, as the Mary. So in any case, that is that. You might also notice there are some differences here if I kind of zoom in a little bit more. The Queen Mary had a water softening plant towards the bow of the ship. This water softening plant uh, not only removed the salts and and minerals from the water of the sea for the boilers, but also the water softening plant made the water drinkable for the passengers. The Queen Mary had tanks, water tanks, that were at the top of the ship. Maybe if I move over here, I can kind of show you. So there were two sets of tanks. The first set, I believe, is right here, either that or right after the funnel. It's hard for me to remember which one. But the first tanks were over here, and then there were after tanks, which were back here above, uh, above, what was this back then? This would have been crew spaces back here. So those water tanks above the ship were, were pumped from below the ship, so from the water softening plant, fed up to those tanks, and then those tanks used gravity to move that fresh, clean, potable water into the various kitchens and staterooms of the ship. So that's how the passengers got their supply of water for everything from drinking water to showering, using sinks, the kitchens could cook with it. All that stuff was pumped from the water softening plant up to the tanks at the top of the ship, fed down into the various rooms. And the same thing would have been for Queen Elizabeth, except they moved her water softening plant into the center of the ship to help make up for the weight distribution. Because she had less Yarrow boilers, they were able to make her fuel oil tanks a lot larger to carry more fuel, as well as increase the size of the water softening plant. The size of the water softening plant also had something to do with the volume of water it could, it could uh, fil filter through. Her turbo generator rooms, you see the Queen Mary has two of them, this room here and this room here. They were consolidated into, ver into one very large turbo generator room in the Queen Elizabeth. I know in the past I, I have mentioned this and people have said, well, that's really weird. Uh, was there enough room in, the, in Queen Elizabeth's turbo generator room for all those generators? If they needed two of them for Queen Mary, why, why bring it down to just one? Well... The Queen Mary's turbo generator rooms were larger than necessary, I would say, 
because they were actually quite roomy compared to other engineering spaces on the ship. That's not saying much, but by combining all the turbo generators into one room, uh, yeah, it would have been slightly crowded, but, uh, but to my knowledge, it, it didn't hinder anything. Well, let me, let me correct myself on that. There, I've re in one of the books I read, they did say that one of the reasons why crew preferred working on Queen Mary was because, well, to, to quote what they said, it was a well-established ship, meaning that the ship's design had run like clockwork. But with Queen Elizabeth, she was really more, she was altered quite heavily. And Again, to quote what the person said, she was thrown together at the last minute in order to get her on the sea and get her out of Scotland while the war was happening. So because of that, that had some effects on her design and, and the way that she operated. They said that when the Queen Mary operated, the reason why they didn't like, or the, when the Queen Elizabeth operated, the reason why they didn't enjoy it so much was because they had all gotten used to working on the Mary, and they had understood how things work, where things are. But with all those alterations made for Queen Elizabeth, from the outside, she looked like a similar ship. But from the inside, a lot of those things were changed around. And, and the way that it all operated just wasn't, wasn't something everybody preferred. So I'll just leave it at that. Because again, I never worked on the ship, so I can't really account for, for that. But that's something I did read. I'm going to get to the comment section real quick since I've ignored you guys for <laughs> for a little while. Um, let's see here. Uh, hello, Ocean Liners channel. Oh, I see. Alicia says, my first name is pronounced as Alicia, but you nailed the surname. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Tyler says, I have seen the blueprints of Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth. Why did Queen Mary have a combined boat and sun deck while well, Queen Elizabeth has two separate decks? They probably labeled it differently. Oh, yes. Okay, I know why. I know what you're talking about. I was thinking for a moment. I'm like, what are you talking about? No, I, I know what you're talking about. So... Yes. So the reason why is because normally the deck that is on ships, the deck that is above the promenade is usually referred to as the boat deck because traditionally that's where all the boats are kept. You'll notice that on Queen Mary, uh, she doesn't have a boat deck. She has a sun deck. And the reason why is because the boats are actually stored above the boat, the what you would call the boat deck. You don't load from the boats on that deck. You don't, the boats aren't even stored there. They're stored in the air. So for that, they labeled Queen Mary's the sun deck. However, the funny thing was, was with Queen Elizabeth, she had a different design on this deck. So essentially, the deck that does line up with the storage of the boats on Queen Mary would have been the sports deck. On Queen Mary, the sports deck was not a continuous thing all the way down the length of the ship it was separated into different levels and different areas because the sports deck on the queen mary was never really meant to be one continuous walking space it was just like i said several areas just separated at once i don't have a picture that illustrates that perfectly i don't think let me see maybe i have something a, a photograph of the ship that that illustrates that point I'm sure I have something. Let me see. Maybe this will work. I think I can zoom into this one. All right. If I move that there, this is a high quality image, so I should be able to zoom in quite closely. All right, so you can see here these are the these are the lifeboats. They're stored above the sun deck, which again traditionally would have been called a boat deck. But you can see that the nearest deck that does line up with them is the sports deck. And as you can see, let me zoom in even further. 
the sports deck is what well was i should say completely separated by various buildings and other structures the sports deck even continues down here this is right next to the 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 what would you call it the well over the first class main lounge and on either side of that well is where you could play like shuffleboard and and such but you'll notice that the shuffleboard part of the sports deck does not line up with the other parts of the sports deck. Here's even another part of the sports deck up here, which you would have to climb down the stairs to get to that. So as you can see, it's not a continuous walking space. It's all blocked off with various uh, structures and things. Some of them for crew, some of them for passengers, some of them like this one is a large open area for passengers to play tennis and such or, or other things that they did like badminton and all that. So. So it wasn't a continuous walking space, but for Queen Elizabeth, they leveled all that out. They made it a giant open walking space up here. And they could have called it the sports deck, but to my understanding, it was the boat deck because of the fact that the boats were already lined up at it. It was technically a boat deck. So I hope that answers your question. That's my best understanding of it. Uh, because of the fact that Queen Elizabeth, they opened that whole deck up there to one one single thing. Let me zoom back out again. Somebody is texting me, but I'm not going to answer it because I'm busy with you folks. Let's see. L. Cruz says, hello, you have done some great videos on the subject and your Disney videos are full of good info. Nice work. Thank you so much. I work very hard on those videos. Octarian says, imagine if Long Beach bought not the Queen Mary, but also bought the Queen Elizabeth. Oh, like if they bought both of them? That would have been cool too. Can you imagine Long Beach would have been the city with the, the last two of the largest ocean liners ever built? Well, I guess Queen Mary 2 is the largest ocean liner ever built. Well, you get what I mean. Hello, Nathan. Sorry, the chat just moved again, so I have to go back. Conrad says, surprise, was this on short notice? I'm glad I'm watching it, Alex. Yeah, actually, this live stream is on short notice. I wanted to do something today, but for days, I couldn't think. I was like, what am I going to do? What am I going to talk about? If I know I want to do a live stream, but what would I talk about? And I thought, well, it, minutes ago, I thought, I'm just going to just gonna do the live stream and just talk, and let's see what I can answer and you know, tell people and let's just see where it goes is essentially what I was thinking. Hello, Matthew. Matthew Mahoney says, why didn't they build third queenship? That's a really good question. So you might have noticed that with a lot of other, a lot of other ocean liner classes, let's say the Lusitania class, they eventually built a, a third, which was Aquitania. She's not; she wasn't identical the way Lusitania and Mauritania were, but they they were technically part of the same class. And then you might notice with the Olympic class, they had three ships. The reason why they needed to do that for those class of ships was because it would have literally taken three ships in order to have a efficient weekly transatlantic service. So. That means that if they wanted a ship to be there and carry passengers away every single week, they needed the three ships to do it. Well, the thing about the Queen class, that's Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth, those two ships were already so large, they could have carried the full accommodation of as many passengers as Cunard needed. But the other thing, too, was they were so fast, they could make the voyage in four days. So doing the weekly crossing was very simple to do with just two ships they didn't need a third queen ship so that's essentially the difference hello everyone hello vincent says hey alex glad to hear you talking about queen elizabeth again my favorite of the queen duo yeah, a lot of people love Queen Elizabeth. I will eventually make a little documentary about, well, several documentaries about the Queen Elizabeth, not just her history, but stuff inside her. Just the way I do with Queen Mary, I'll eventually start doing that with Queen Elizabeth as well. So that way you guys will have tons of stuff about both ships. But I'm still learning about Queen Elizabeth, so...
I don't know what to put. Oof says, I wonder why didn't they ever make any major alterations to Queen Mary, such as moving the ventilation to the upper decks? Well, I mean, technically her ventilation is on the upper decks. When you look at Queen Mary, all her ventilation work is on the exact same deck as Queen Elizabeth. The difference is that with Queen Elizabeth, they they consolidated all the ventilation into these structures that surround her funnels. Instead of being single vents that stand next to the funnels, they were a structure that surrounds the funnels. So with Queen Elizabeth, they were able to do that. But with Queen Mary, I think it would have just costed way too much money to do that kind of alteration for something that really wasn't necessary with Queen Mary. It really would have just been for aesthetic purposes, and aesthetic purposes isn't good enough for something that would have costed that much. Queen Elizabeth was built to to have more hidden ventilation, uh, but Queen Mary, you know, obviously she would have taken a lot of work for them to do that because her her ventilation, uh, what do they call those things? I got pull up the other picture again to show you guys. Because the ventilation on Queen Mary, don't look at this square thing here. That is an air conditioner. This one and that one is an air conditioner added after the ship came to Long Beach. But these large ventilators here, these huge curved structures, they aren't sitting that close to the funnels. They're actually quite a distance from the funnel. So trying to combine them into one structure the way that they did with Queen Elizabeth would have costed way too much money because that shaft goes all the way down through the ship and they would have had to move it over by cl close to 20 feet. And it's, yeah, it would have been way too expensive for something just to make it look prettier, I guess is what people would say. I personally don't find it ugly. I, I don't. I'm Even when I look at Mauritania, with all of those little ventilation uh, ventilators on the top of the ship, I think it looks great. The only thing is what I find ugly is that they made it even worse when Queen Mary came to Long Beach because as you can see, here's an air conditioner, here's an air conditioner, one there, one there. There's various ventilators that they added. These, these trio of ventilators right here are not original. There's another ventilator right here that's not original. So they they added a whole bunch of stuff to the ship, all kinds of air conditioning units. They put it on the upper decks of the ship and disguised it to look like the other original features, <clears throat> but it made it even more crowded. So when the Queen Mary was, was at sea, she, she didn't really look that bad, honestly. It was it's just you you mainly just saw the really large ventilators. The smaller ones, you barely even noticed that they were there. But yeah, so that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> My little defense of the Queen Mary. I think the Queen Mary looks great the way she is. N not the way she is in Long Beach, but the way she was. I think she looked great that way. I would like to see them in the future find a way to move her air conditioning units into her funnels. Her Queen Mary's funnels right now in Long Beach are not original. Let me just so you can see that. The Queen Mary's funnels in Long Beach are not original. They are replicas of the originals. So I have no problem with them finding a way to alter those funnels to be used as the air conditioner hiding areas, <laughs> for lack of better words, to hide the air conditioners in those funnels. I think if they could find a way to do it and make it so it doesn't change the way the Queen Mary looks too much, I would like to see them do that. I think it would make the Queen Mary look a lot more neat and tidy on top, closer to how she used to look. She was slightly more neat and tidy in the past. Gesh Make says, Hi, Alex. Have you considered writing a book about the Queen Mary's past history and present trials and tribulations? Your videos are so great. I think you'd write a good book. You know, I mean, you know, maybe I, I, I have a habit of saying no to everything and then I end up just doing it anyway. <laughs> it's like there was a time where I would have never talked about Queen Mary on my channel and now look at me. 
Um, but I would say at the moment I have no plans to write a book on Queen Mary. I think one of the things is that I think one of the things that makes a book like that difficult is you must show pictures, you know, you must show pictures of the Queen Mary if you're going to write a book about her. And the thing is, is you have to get licenses to use each and every photograph you put in a book like that. And I, I don't know the first thing about doing all that. You know, I, I, I would be contacting people left and right. There, there are photos I show on my channel and stuff that thankfully are protected under certain YouTube licenses. But as soon as I start writing a book that I sell with other people's owned photographs of the ship, uh, it would make it really difficult. But let's see. Conrad says there might be a cell phone tower in the funnels already. Well, uh, thankfully, I don't think there is, but I wouldn't be surprised. Honestly, it's not a bad idea to put a cell phone tower in those funnels. It really isn't. As long as you disguise it so you can't see it from the outside, that wouldn't be so bad. And to be honest, the, the you don't need the whole tower for cell phone transmitters. The transmitters are like a, as tall as a person, but they're they're flat panels so you could easily hide it on the queen mary and make people's cell phone reception a little bit better in in that area so uh, why did they remove the mary's stern machinery during the long beach conversion so like the stuff on the on the poop deck i mean i can bring that up too let's see This is why I like doing live streams this way because then I can pull up like a video or something and show you guys. What I'll do is I will pull up a video of me going there and then let's see it would have been this one. I gotta press pause. I'm gonna turn this down because otherwise you'll just hear my my recorded self yammering away about stuff I don't know about. Back then, I knew virtually nothing about the Queen Mary, so everything I learned back then was something I had to, uh, something I had to kind of look up real fast and teach myself. Let me see. Here's the video. Uh, I have to downsize it a little bit so I can fit it in this thing here. And if I move that up a little bit, there we go. All right. Uh, that should be playing for you guys. So you'll see me kind of, is it in this video? Hold on. Let me just double check. It's not this one. Well, then where is it? Is it that one? Ah, sorry. Wrong one. It's this one. Here we go. So that's, the Queen Mary's poop deck. Maybe I can put this on like loop or something while I talk. Repeat. There we go. All right. So while I talk, I can show you guys that. So the reason why they removed a lot of the machinery in the stern, especially on the poop deck, is most noticeable that everything's missing is because... First of all, they, they wanted to free up space in the stern of the ship so that way they could make, uh, that way they could use those spaces for banqueting and other services. Again, back then the ship wasn't meant to be 100% a museum. Sure, they kept a few things to use as exhibits, but back then when they were converting the Queen Mary, the idea was really to use Queen Mary to make money. So every every space that they could use to do banquets and events, they freed it up as much as they could. So the poop deck on the ship, for instance, had a lot of machinery and capstans and and, you know, I forget what they're called. The the they're kind of like docking cleats, but they're the really large ones. But any case they needed to free that space up. So now today they use the stern of the ship there 
uh, for events and movies. They filmed music videos on it and stuff like that, all because it's opened up so people have space to walk around and stuff. Now, below that, uh, is it the next level below? No, the next level below is the hospital. So below the hospital is... No, below the hospital is the other thing. Hmm. Well, there's also the where the Capstan Lounge is today is or was a space where there were other Capstans. Obviously, it's called the Capstan Lounge. So other. Hold on. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I have a picture of it. I have a picture of everything. I'm not even kidding. I keep a full on. I'll show you. I keep files of like the Queen Mary. Oh, well, I can't show you if I do it like that. Let me see. So I have all these files of stuff with the Queen Mary in it. So let me see, uh, I go to, no, no, not deck plans. Of course, I do that all wrong. Uh, it would be images index, here we go. And then we can go by deck. So let's see, if I go by deck, it would be, what, is, what deck is the capstan lounge on? Is it a deck? Uh, no, yes, there we go. Open that up. This is a picture of the capstan lounge uh, back when it was still operating under Wyndham. But essentially, before you even go out into this area where this this large cutaway is, this would have been a wall. So you wouldn't have been able to go in there. But this whole room, the Capstan Lounge, let me see if there's another photo. All these things are too wide for the... All right, let me see. Never mind. Of course, it's going to fight me every way it gets. Here we go. So... This whole capstan lounge used to be the second class overflow lounge. It was called the overflow lounge because on the deck above was the main lounge. And the second class main lounge was huge. But even then, they had so many second class passengers that they needed a, a smaller, quieter space for them if they didn't want to be up amongst all the stuff happening in the deck above. So this area, Again, it looked nice and art deco-y in the past. Today, it looks nothing like it used to, so don't judge it. It looks nothing like it used to today. But there was a huge like lounge here, and then they cut open this part of the wall because beyond that was actually a corridor that ran along the length of the ship uh, for maybe like 100 feet or less. And it had capstans and gear and stuff like that for roping in the ship and getting it closer to the docks and stuff like that. They got rid of that. They have a few capstans left, but they use them as like decorative tables, believe it or not. But yeah, so they got rid of that because they wanted to open that space up and make and make this whole thing into the capstan lounge, a massive area that could be used for banquets and such. That was a really long-winded way of explaining things, but I insist on delivering the best answers to you guys. Let's see. Thomas Brooks says, Alex, what do you think about Queen Mary's original 1936 linoleum tiles? Uh, I like them. I wish that they were still around. Um, there, some of them are still around. There's a staircase forward of the ship that still has the original linoleum along the stairs. I think it was actually called Corkoid, but um, but yeah. So there's some areas of the ship that still have the original Corkoid. Yeah, and I I I love it. I wish it was. I, I wish the whole ship still had it, but they got rid of a lot of that stuff. Uh, in the observation bar, only up until a few, several years ago, I should say, they still had some of the original linoleum underneath the carpeting. So today there's carpeting in the observation bar. But back then they still, but it was still underneath. When they changed out the carpeting, they got rid of the original linoleum that was underneath the carpeting. 
so sad. So sad that they did that. Let's see. Pablo says, hello, I live in the extreme south of the American continent, straight of Magellan, and in the city of Punta Arenas, Chile. Where can I find the voyages made by the Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth? Where can you find the voyages? Um, do, you, do you mean when, when they visited Chile? Uh, when they retired? That's the only time I can think of that the Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth went to Chile was after they retired. And where can you find the voyages? Like the... Like pictures of when the ships were there? You could try Googling it, but I don't... I don't know for certain. I know, for one thing, I haven't really seen photographs of the ships in any of those countries. I haven't seen photographs of it in Brazil photographs of it in Chile. I haven't seen any of those photographs, but they must be somewhere. Someone must have taken a picture of it. I hope so. Mike Marin says, Alex, write the book and have a friend do the footwork for pics to use. Ugh, I don't have friends who can do that. <laughs> Besides, I'm not even sure I want to write a book. So, Coco says, hey, Alex, great videos. How many private bathrooms and cabins did the queens have? Oh, that's a good one. I can probably show you a, a deck plan of that. Let me see. I can't tell you how many, but I can show you some that do, some that don't. Let's see. Be under... Let's start with main deck. So if we start with main deck, these are basically, we're looking at mostly first class areas. Main deck, let's see. Pretty sure main deck had only first class rooms. Yeah, that's correct. Main deck had only first class cabins. So let's start with this side. You can kind of see that, that these spaces were designed for two people. That's why there's numbers, you know, to one, for instance. And unfortunately, these deck plans don't tell you where the bathrooms are, but I can kind of show you. So this would have been the bathroom here and a bathroom there, each separated by a space that I believe was for plumbing. So that way the plumbers can easily access those areas. But yes, so for these large first class rooms, they each had a bathroom near the entrance to the room. The suites are towards the center of the ship. If I zoom out, you can kind of see. So they say special rooms, suites. So the suites were towards the center of the ship. And the suites are, it's so hard for me to kind of tell you, but you can, you can see interspersed between them are these other rooms that say one. Those are for, those are like smaller rooms that sometimes would have been joined with the suites, but sometimes would have just been rooms by themselves for first class passengers that weren't paying very much money. So believe it or not, there were tiers to, to what kind of rooms you could get. Some suites were basically, you know, large spaces that you could live in. And some of them were interconnecting and interjoining. So you can see there's, that's why there's doorways between these walls is some of them interconnected and you could connect all these rooms together and stuff sometimes depending on the suite. But there were some first class rooms that did not have a bathroom. So let me see if I go. So the main deck is where all the most expensive rooms were. But if I go down a level to a deck, they get a little bit cheaper. So let's see here. Those all have bathrooms. Those are the same. Uh, let's see. That's the entrance. 
There's an entrance to that one there, entrance to that one there. Okay, I see. All right, and that would have been ah, a shared bathroom. Okay. What is this one then? Well, you can see there are some areas that had shared bathrooms. Today, the ship, they've altered those rooms to be able to make each one of the rooms have a bathroom of their own. But some of these rooms would have shared bathrooms, which is interesting. Uh, I'm trying to find a perfect example of it, but there are lavatories. Here we go. This one points to some lavatories. So these are public lavatories, these rooms here. And that was for people who did not have their own bathrooms. You know, sometimes you might be put in a room that's kind of far away and there's no bathroom there. But I think, again, I'd have to go down another level to show you that. Let me see. Gosh, I wish I had the better version of the deck plans. There's a better version of this that literally is labels where all the bathrooms are, which make it so much easier for me to look at. Uh, so like these staterooms here don't have their own bathroom. This probably would have been a lavatory for them to use, to share. Especially like, yeah, all these rooms here probably would have shared a lavatory. Uh... Let's go to where room B340 would have been. Wait, that can't be right. What? No, I am looking at a historic one. Okay, well, well, in the 1930s, you see, this is where room B340 is. In the 1930s, this would have been different. There would have been, I think, four cabins here and then there would have been a public restroom right here on the corner which was small but it would have had you know it would have had a toilet in there for everybody to share and i think i think even a bath in there for everybody to share unless there was a different one they did have separate bath rooms that people could could uh, bathe in if we go to tourist class which on B deck, tourist class is towards the aft end. You can see things are a little bit more different. So some second class rooms had their own bathrooms, but then others they had to share with a much larger space. So I believe these, ah, yeah, I believe these are the bath rooms. While the lavatories, I'm sure it would have been labeled here somewhere. Let me see would have maybe they would have labeled it tell me gents lavy here we go where does that point to points to i can't tell this one points to ladies lavy here okay so there would have been entrance here for the for the ladies lavatory and then this one here for the men's yeah there we go okay so i'm i'm understanding it <laughs> there we go so all right so yes depending on where you were on the ship would have depended on if you had your own bathroom versus sharing. And of course, if we go down to, uh, let's say it would have been D deck after the war, it was relabeled C deck. But anyway, the point is, is like, if we go here, this is an interesting spot. This is where third class would have been after the war. They would have called this tourist class, but, uh, but yes, it is third class. And it, as you can see, none of these rooms have their own private bathroom or private toilet, basically. There would have been a lavatory here and a lavatory here. Uh, I don't know which one was men's, which one was women's, but I think if actually if we count, uh, there, okay, so this one is the men's. I know because right where it says lavy, there would have been urinals right here. And the women's didn't have it. The women's had several toilets instead. So this would have been the women's lavatory, and this would have been the men's lavatory. And all these rooms in this square area here that I'm circling, all these rooms would have shared those public lavatories. And these square spaces here, this one, that one, this one, that one, those were the bath 
rooms where they would have shared, a, a, you know, the usage of a bath. Not like at the same time, obviously. You would have reserved it. You would have told your steward that uh, that you wanted to take a bath and they would have drawn one for you, which was a nice thing for third class passengers back then, having someone draw you a bath. But still, you didn't get your own. You had to share. You had to share a, a room. So, all right. And then let's see about... Okay, so these these spaces up here, these larger spaces, these are dorm rooms for the for the stewards' accommodations. So I believe this would have been. Let me think. On Queen Mary, was it like Titanic or was it different? Did they have first, second, and third class stewards, or did they actually switch positions? I think. I think on Queen Mary. If you were a if you were a cabin steward, one day you might be put first class, another day you might be put third class. On Titanic, it was different. You were you were either a first, second, or third class steward, so um, it, there was no yeah. But um, but yeah, on Queen Mary they had these large dorm rooms for all the stewards. As you can see here, this labels the stewards' lavatory. They also would have had. Um, a separate room for them to take a bath and clean themselves and stuff. Yeah. I would have not wanted to be a steward on the Queen Mary back then. It's unfortunate that um, Mr. Ralph Rushton is no longer with us because he would have been a wealth of knowledge about what it was like to be a steward on the Queen Mary. He was, he's, he was a, he was a restaurant steward on the ship uh, for a long time, but occasionally he worked as a stateroom steward. Let me get back to the questions here, but that was a really good question, so. Let's see. Oh boy, everything moved again. Ah, here we go. Conrad says capstan makes a good stand-up bar table. Yeah, a capstan can if you alter it. The top of a capstan is generally rounded. So when they when they altered the capstans in the capstan lounge, they gave them a flat top, which it's unfortunate, really. I hate to see artifacts get altered like that, you know, for a museum, you know. Uh Matthew says a good idea would have would be having fake smoke coming out the funnels. Yeah, but fake smoke is bad for the environment. The only way the only fake smoke that is okay is like what Disney does with like if you look at uh, the cabin on Tom Sawyer Island, they it looks like there's smoke coming out of it. That's actually water vapor. But um, you would have to create a ton of water vapor to come out of Queen Mary's stacks in order for it to be visible to people otherwise the water vapor would disappear so quickly uh you wouldn't be able to see it from a distance you'd have to have a huge volume and that would just take a lot of energy to do but um but yeah but fake smoke is bad for the environment so uh conrad says the observation bar is my favorite space oh nice i really like the observation bar myself Sus says, so what if Queen Mary crashed into Queen Elizabeth? That's a really complex question. <laughs> I couldn't answer that for you on a single live stream. Um, it would have been cool if second class swimming pool was still around. Too bad it's gone now. Yeah, I'll show you guys a picture of the, oh, wrong one. Picture of the second class swimming pool. Let's see. Images index. Would have been like E deck or something. Yeah, I was right. Yeah, E deck. There we go. Here's a nice little picture. Uh, oh, you guys want to see a little treat? I shouldn't show you this, but I will. This is the underside of the tank of the first class swimming pool. So the tank is what you swim in. It's the area you would swim in the pool. Well, this is underneath the tank. So there is a, a about a six foot gap, maybe less, uh, between the bottom of the tank and 
the top of the structure that supports the weight of the tank. Now, to my understanding, the structure that supports the weight of the tank is fine. It's not it's in its best condition, but it's fine. But as you can see, the bottom of the pool tank is extremely degraded. Now, why is that? Well, the Queen Mary, for its 31 years at sea, had saltwater swimming pools. Saltwater because saltwater was, well, first of all, it was considered therapeutic. Um, it still is today. You might, in, in spas, they still have like saltwater swimming pools and stuff like that. Um, but yes, so it had salt water. But the other reason why was because it was just easier to maintain and clean while at sea. You know, back then they didn't want to have a separate room full of chemicals to do chlorinated pools and all that. And frankly, most swimming pools, even on land, were salt water anyway. That's just how they were. It was just normal. But salt water eventually degraded the steel tank that supports it. And there would have been, like, steel supports here. But you might notice that these supports are made of wood. Well, what happened was the original supports that, that held up the tank had rotted away uh, to the point where they were no longer usable. So whatever, I think this picture was taken in 1992. So this must have been Disney that put these in, but Disney eventually put in these wood supports and those have since rotted away. So the pool tank of the Queen Mary on the second class area is not at all able of supporting weight at all so the pool tank i'll have a whole video about queen mary's first class pool and what's happened to it and where it is and all that i'll have a whole video about that eventually you guys will see it it'll be interesting i'll draw diagrams of the pool room and and what is really wrong with it because some people think the whole room is structurally unsound that's not true the pool tank is structurally unsound but not the pool room so um anyway so yes uh that is <laughs> that is what the underside of Queen Mary's first class pool tank looks like. Very sad. But anyway, here's a picture of the of the second class pool on it was on E deck. Today that is considered D deck. Yeah. And D deck is where you enter currently the um what do you call it? The uh the museum. When you go to see the engine spaces, you have to go into the stern of the ship from ground level. And once you enter, you're on D deck and you go down into the E deck. Um, well, this was located on D on, well, D deck. But when Queen Mary first, it's okay. Let me just quickly say this. From 1936 to, you know, through World War I, uh, it went, it went, uh, you know, promenade, main deck, A deck, B deck, C deck, and so on. Well, after the war, they changed it because people, I guess, they wanted to make it easier for passengers to know where all the all the restaurants were. All the restaurants were on C deck. They could have easily said C deck for cuisine, but instead they just went, let's call it R deck for restaurant deck. So... So they could have just called it the cuisine deck. I don't understand that. But they changed it. To, they changed C deck to R deck. And then everything below C deck was then redesignated from C, D, E, F, G, so on. So, yeah, that's why I always get confused is because I have to remember the designation. So before the war, this pool was on E deck. After the war, it's considered D, um, D deck. Yeah. All right, let's see what other people's questions are. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Conrad says, believe me, Alex, you do not want to write a book. <laughs> yeah. After, I thought for the longest time you were writing a book, and then I was like, oh, you're actually reading a book. Uh, let's see. Gordon says, if you had to pick any ship for some company to build a replica of, what would it be? If I was given the choice, I would say replicate. That's really difficult because 
Because my favorite ship that no longer exists would probably be Mauritania. But I do have to admit, Olympic Olympic was also really historically important for two reasons. One, because of its war service. You know, Mauritania did do some great service during war, but but Olympic is it's it's it, it's its service in the war was more notable. But the other reason too is because Olympic looks so much like Titanic, or I should say the other way around, Titanic looks so much like Olympic that you could also use Olympic to teach people about Titanic. It would make the perfect, you know, museum. But but even then, what what you're asking for them to replicate is probably be for what for sailing so i don't know what would be best for sailing honestly but but yeah i mean naturally i'd want to say mauritania but i think if i was given that choice if someone said alex you are now responsible for deciding what ship comes back into existence i would want to say mauritania but i know the world would want me to say either titanic or olympic i don't believe it's right to replicate titanic that way so i would say olympic and then put museums in there about titanic that's what i'd say but um but yeah, if it was as a museum, just a museum, maybe I'd say Titanic. I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, Hobgoblin says, what was the most expensive cabin on the ship and what is it like now? Hmm. I'm going to be honest. I don't know what the most expensive most expensive cabin was. It would have been the the largest cabins, but but a lot of them were very similar. They just had different styles. I don't think there was one that was like particularly the most expensive. There probably would have been four that shared that same, you know, that same level. Like I'll show you why. I'll go back to my Back to the deck plans, to main deck. Main deck is where all the most expensive cabins were, and center of the ship is where all the most expensive suites were. So if, if, if you use these extra thick walls here that I'm pointing out as the boundary, you can see that all these cabins here were the suites. These were the largest ones. And the largest suites would have been here, and here because these were a lot of these were interconnecting suites so these were huge um one of them one of them on this part i don't know which one is today called um the churchill suite there's also the elizabeth suite uh let's see there was the windsor suite all that so all I know is the the largest suites would have been the ones the most expensive. And I think depending on how many you combined as well, because you don't have to combine all the suites. That's the funny thing. Like if you, if you look at this one right here, I'll zoom in on it. You would enter through a doorway about right here, right? And then you'd enter like a, a foyer, right? Now you could choose to have just you know, two rooms connected, this one, that one, or you can expand out and do another room, that one, this one, that one, and they could keep expanding and expanding it. That's the way it was designed. They could expand it to however many rooms you needed. So if, you know, if the president of the United States or, or, or even the queen of, of England wanted to sail aboard, they could rent out all these suites here as one giant suite. I'm not even kidding, one giant suite right here. Well, except for this room here that says one on it. But yeah, so this whole thing, I think this is a closet here actually. So maybe not this room. This one, that one, this one, that one, and all this could have been used as one suite. But it was collapsible down to a smaller, just this room, you know? So really, it, it's hard to say. It's really hard to say how expensive it would have been because I, I don't know. I don't know. But but that's how I know it, it's... it's uh, that's how I know it's... What am I trying to say? 
Think slowly, Alex. That is how I know it is put together. I don't, for lack of a better word. I, why I'm having such trouble talking today. Um, let's go back to the comments. Thomas Brooks says, I think that when Queen Mary came to Long Beach... Whoa, where, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Okay, I think that when Queen Mary came to Long Beach, they should have restored the first-class pool to hotel use. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. They, maybe it would have worked back then. I know today there are so many requirements for how pools are supposed to be, you know, like, I, well, like, I, like, I feel like I was already talking about this on another live stream, but... Basically, today there are in the United States there is something called the Americans with Disabilities Act. It's it's something you have to be compliant with ADA compliance, and the pool on the on the Queen Mary today would have to be shut down. You couldn't use it for hotel use because you'd have to make all kinds of alterations to it to make it usable. Um, one of the main things that they would have had to install was uh, I forget what they what they call it. It's like a little elevator that allows people who cannot climb into the pool to be able to be lowered into the pool. And so you've probably seen it at a public pool today where, you know, there's like a little device and the, the person, the disabled person will sit on the device and then it will rotate them over to the pool and then it will lower them in. You'd have to have one of those installed, which means drilling through the, the precious flooring and all that of that room to install it because it needs to be anchored in there really well. Um, and then there's other things too. There's, there's rules about, about this, the steepness of the pool and, you know, and the, there's a point where like the pool has to, if, if you're going to have a deep end, it's got to slope at a certain amount and all that stuff. It's, it's ridiculous, all the rules, but but yeah, it would make it difficult for the for that hotel room to operate. And to my knowledge, there isn't a way to even get people who have mobility issues down to the lower level because I'll show you why. Uh, again, I'll use my my deck plans here. So. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll open up the ones from today, the modern deck plans. That'll make it so much easier for you guys to, to see because it'll make more sense. But um, if we zoom in here, this is our deck, and the pool room is here. Well, as soon as you enter our deck, you're actually on the second level above the pool, right? So the pool is way down below you. You have to, you have to go downstairs to get there. Well, if we go down to the next level... There's actually no way to get in there. It's sealed off. Everything. There's there's all these service corridors and stuff. If 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 a disabled person wanted to even use the pool, they'd have to be led through all these backstage service areas to even get down in there and have access to the pool tank. So it would have been really difficult. What I do think they should do is let me move you over here no no no. we need to go down a level let's see this would have been this would have was d deck so we need to go to was e deck there we go all right so remember i was telling you about how the second class pool is now over where the lobby of the engineering spaces are so this is the lobby so you would enter from this ramp here and then you come in and, and you see there's this big open area that you can either go left or right and you can go down and you'll see that there's this huge lobby. And if you come way over here, there's an entrance down into the engineering spaces. But then over here is the entrance to the 4D theater. So this is the huge 4D theater here. Well, the 4D theater is quite literally basically sitting at the back end of what was the second class pool. So the second class pool would have been right here. I'm not even kidding, right there. And um, they built all this stuff up in its place. What I think they should do, oh, and by the way, you'll notice when you enter the, the lobby, there's a central shaft just sitting there. I think I can show you a video of that too. 
show you the entrance to the hotel lobby. Uh, do, 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 do. That way you can understand what I'm talking about. And you enter, you see there's a, there's a ramp there on this side and then I'll be going down the ramp on the other side. But if you look at the center of the room, there's a big shaft here, right? And I was like, I wonder what that is. That looks like an elevator shaft. And I thought to myself, but I got down to the bottom level. I'm like, I don't see an elevator down there. But you see, here's the ramp that I'm on. And that ramp is, is this thing here. So, if, so you can see what I'm talking about, right? And then here's that big shaft that I was telling you about. And I was like, I got down to the lower level and I thought, you know, I went down here, there's stairs here. Let me go back a little bit to show you that, that, yeah. So I went down those stairs to the lower level and I'm like, there's no elevator down here. What is that? And I learned that this was where this, the second class elevators went. And I thought, and everyone was telling me, oh yeah, they removed the second class elevators there, they're, they're not there. And I thought, if they're not there, why is that shaft still there? Like, why is it, why did they circle around it? They didn't remove the elevator shaft. They built a circular wall around it. And I'll show you on these deck plans. See these, these two squares in the center, this square and that square, these are the two elevators. And they built a circular wall around it. So they didn't remove the elevators. They just built a wall around it so you don't have access to it. So those elevators, they could still go down to those. Oh, by the way, one of those elevators is still operational today. They use it for housekeeping. Housekeeping goes from level to level using that elevator. But they could revamp both elevators, make them usable. And people can come down here to this level and they could rebuild the second class pool. And because it would be a rebuild, they could make it ADA compliant. And even if even if people couldn't fit in the elevators, because I admit the elevators are smaller than they should be for ADA compliance, but they have a ramp right here. So it wouldn't be too pleasant for, you know, if it, especially if it's a cold, windy day and you're tr trying to, you know, get down there using your wheelchair to get to the swimming pool, that wouldn't be very, pleasant I'll admit but it is a way for you to get down there to the pool area and the pool could be right here but otherwise the other guests they could use the old elevator shaft and get there because the elevators are still there they're just behind a, a fake wall that they built so I think they should make an ADA compliant uh, rebuild the second class swimming pool to be ADA compliant and allow it elevator access that's what I think they should do all right, I'm going to end this live stream soon because we've been going on for quite a while, but I will get to a few more comments first. Uh, let's see. Gordon says, I can't believe the Queen Mary owners still advertise room B340 as a haunted room. I know it's silly i have no idea why they but i don't know i mean i know why obviously they it makes them money uh <laughs> gordon says why am i not surprised about the underside of the water tank yeah and then disney made the water tank for the for the first class pool impossible i'll show you why because you could still have refurbished it um images let's go to our deck see the first class pool on our deck here is a photo uh taken from inside the first class pool let me move this down you can kind of see in the photo that the pool tank is blue okay well let, let me show you another photo this one would be more historically accurate. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Um, this one. So this is a colorized photo, but it's colorized accurately. I'll explain why. So this is this was originally black and white, but uh, but this person colorized it accurately. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Notice the tiles on the side of the pool are not blue. The water's blue. That's how the person colorized it. But the tiles are not blue. The tiles 
match the tiles on the walls. They're this ivory color, right? That's how it really was in real life. Well, Disney came in in the 1980s and saw that the pool was leaking. Remember I told you that Disney was the ones that installed those wooden blocks underneath the pool tank to support it? Instead of actually refurbishing it, they just propped up some wooden blocks to prevent the pool tank from collapsing. Uh, well, Disney was like, well, we don't want this thing to leak anymore, but we still want it to hold water because it, back then, as a museum, it still held water to show people that it was a pool. Well, Disney was like, well, we still want it to hold water. We just don't want it to leak anymore. And we don't want to fix it, but we don't want it to leak. So they're like, what do we do? Well, what they did was they went to, you know, the local pool supply store and bought this this special blue paint you put in swimming pools to um, to make the concrete of the of your swimming pool uh, impermeable to water. It's so it's a paint, but it makes it waterproof. And that's what Disney did. They they painted over. Oh, that's the wrong one. Where did that come from? They painted over the original glazed tiles, okay, and they painted them blue. And the problem with that, oh, wrong, pff, wrong thing again. The problem with that is you can't remove it. It's, it. it's tile work. If you try to scrape it off, it'll take you years. It's so difficult. And that stuff is supposed to be impermeable to water, so it's on there. You could use chemicals and try to get at it with, you know, with like, you know, an, a, a, a hobby knife and just go in there. But I'm, I'm not even kidding. You'd, you'd have experts in there for years carefully scratching off the paint away from the glazed tiles. It would take forever. So it's basically, uh, f from a uh, logistical standpoint, impossible. So, yeah, they Disney ruined the pool tank forever. And I'll show you another another way that the pool tank was ruined. Um, after Disney, the next company came in, RMS Foundation. They decided that they were going to drain the pool because the pool was still leaking. Um, and so they thought, well, what are we going to do for our Ghosts and Legends tour? We got to make the pool look scary. So what they did was they installed these misters they're they're special devices that mist in into the pool and they filled the pool with mist and lights and stuff like that to make it look creepy well to install that they drilled into the original tile work to install all this all these systems drilled into all of that you know ru further ruining the whole thing so they did all this stuff Look at that. You can see where the tank is cracking open right here. Oh my gosh. And rusting and leaking. So they did even worse work to that. And oh, and here's the here's the creepy television and stuff and the special effects all drilled into the original tile work. That's right. This speaker here, this speaker probably weighs more than 50 pounds. I'm not even kidding. It's going to be heavy. It's huge. Look at the look at the size of that television and the size of the speaker next to it. That's heavy. They drilled that into into the the bottom of the of the 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 balcony area. So yeah, and then you can see where other tiles have fallen off in the past, and they replaced them with like cheap Home Depot tile work, right? It doesn't match the other glazed tiles. So there's been so much damage done to this room. In fact, this picture was taken so long ago, the pool room looks even worse today even worse i know that's hard to believe but it looks so much worse today it this room has fallen into such disrepair there are light fixtures falling off the walls and stuff it's the more tiles are missing you know this mirror in the back was shattered by somebody who would shatter a mirror i don't know but they did you know so it's really the, this room is in much worse shape today but yeah, it's it's awful. It's awful. I mean, look at this. Uh, let me zoom in again. There's a, a speaker up here in the corner that they put into the ceiling. You know, that's an original ceiling right there. Like, just, it's upsetting. It's really upsetting when I see that. How nobody just cared that, that oh, it's a historic ship, but we're going to do whatever we want to do with it. So, who cares, you know. Um, but, yeah, so... Okay, so let me get to a few more questions. Uh, 
Tyler says, did Queen Mary really have carpeting during her service life? I'm always hearing that she had Wilton carpets. Uh, she had carpeting in some areas, not all areas. So, uh, for instance, Queen Mary's hallways today have carpeting. They didn't have carpeting back then. The carpeting in the hallways was actually back then. It was linoleum or corkoid, depending on what year it was. But there was corkoid all the way down. So it was it was like a hard material. Um, her staircases didn't have carpeting. They had the corkoid. Um, most of the spaces on the Queen Mary had hard surfaces. And the reason why is because it's a ship. Things happen. Liquids get on stuff. You know, it... it even some, you know, even in a worst case scenario, if a rogue wave came and shattered the windows of the observation bar and the water flooded down the decks of the ship, uh, they wouldn't want all that carpeting to get damaged. So most of these places actually had hard surfaces to be easily cleanable. Um, but even if the worst didn't happen, you'd still have people dropping drinks and stuff like that. You know, if stewards were carrying soup to someone's cabin and they dropped it, you wouldn't want it to get all over the carpeting and swish about. So, but there were some areas that had carpeting. The first class main lounge had carpeted areas. The first, uh, the, 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 the restaurants each had carpeted areas of them. So there were some areas with carpeting. Uh, as for Wilton, I'm sure I have ads somewhere that like, I have a book that has ads in it. For the car, for like the carpeting of the ship, it probably is Wilton. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, Matthew Mahoney says, "What's left of Queen Mary's Turkish baths? They're gone. They're 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 completely gutted." And then the irony was, after they removed the Turkish baths, then they built they built spas on main deck out of first class cabins. I'm not even kidding. They took first class cabins and turned them into spas. And I'm like, why would you do that? You you had Turkish baths on our deck right next to the swimming pool. The Turkish baths are spas. Well, I don't understand that. They're gone. They're gone. Um, <laughs> Conrad says, I guess people back then had poor memories. Restaurants on sea deck. Yeah, I know. They, they were like, oh, let's call it our deck for, for restaurant deck. And I'm like thinking, I'm like, why didn't they just call it just, why didn't they just continue calling it sea deck for cuisine? You know, um, I don't know, says, last question, why were the lifeboat cover tarps removed from the Mary? They were getting rotten, and they're, so, so they were last replaced by Disney, and then in the 1990s, probably moving into the early 2000s, uh, those coverings were getting just destroyed, and it would have cost a lot of money to replace them, but the other thing, too, was there was there was a worry that those coverings were actually starting to have a different effect, that they were actually allowing water to pool into the, into the lifeboats. Um, water did pool in the lifeboats. Uh, but yeah, the way that everybody dealt with it was really poor. So they, they removed the tarps and the lifeboats then were in direct light and yeah. And, um, and then the RMS Foundation, they removed a lot of the original features from inside the lifeboats. The lifeboats still ha still had a lot of their original features in them. And then RMS Foundation came in and they removed a ton of those, um, just gutting out most of the lifeboats. Some of them still have a lot of their original machinery in them, but yeah, it's really unfortunate what they did. Um, let's see. Uh, Coco says, what was the last year the Queens made regular transatlantic voyages without cruises in the schedule? Without cruises in the schedule? Uh, I don't know. I, I think every year of their last years, they have they at one point had cruises in their schedule, but they still maintained transatlantic crossings uh, during the warmer weather. The, or I should say, you know, late spring 
through summer through early fall <clears throat> they did transatlantic crossings but but yeah i think they did cruises throughout the winter times even in the last years of their operation so yeah, i i don't know what the last year was that they did cruising because it must have been for queen mary at least it must have been 1960 i'm thinking but i could be wrong uh... rusty says what happened to the vertical light pillars in the main dining room they made the room beautiful do they still exist yeah i know what you're talking about um so rusty is talking about where is it where is it okay so i'll show you guys a picture put that there open the photos there we go so rusty is talking about these things these there's two of these vertical light pillars that were sitting here in the first class uh main restaurant and what happened was after the queen mary came to long beach they needed this space to be bigger and more open for the banquets and stuff like that so they actually removed these two light fixtures but they kept them and i'll show you where they are now um well i'll show you where one of them is now because they separated them so na, 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 na. oh please tell me i have a modern photo oh i do okay good i was like come on i have to have a modern photo of that all right here we go I'll zoom in for you. So on promenade deck in the main hall of otherwise known as Piccadilly Circus, they have one of them and it's sitting right here in the main hall. So they moved one of them here. The other one was moved into the cargo holds, which is their, they call it their archives, but yeah, the cargo holds are their archives, very poorly taking care of stuff in there, but yes. So they use the other one. They cannibalize the other one for spare parts to keep this one maintained. So yeah, this one is still there and it's, it was from the, the first class main restaurant. Um, let's see. You know, if the Queen Mary owners would advertise it as one of the last ocean liners in the world and not a haunted hotel, they would make some more money. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, it would. It, if they marketed it differently, they would make a lot more money because they, if they marketed it to children and families, they'd get a much larger portion of, uh, of, of visitors, a uh, larger demographic. Uh, yeah. Spanner says, can you show us your favorite rare picture of the Mary? I can't think of one at the moment, honestly. I would have to take some time to to think if I even have a rare picture of the Mary. Yeah. Uh, and then and then it would have to be my favorite. I have to think about that too. I don't know. Uh, John Johnson says they are building Titanic too. So there's that. No, they're not. the The one that was designed for sailing was canceled last year, and then the one that was designed for the theme park was also canceled. That theme park was canceled. So. There's, they're not building Titanic too. Besides, the one that was designed to be sailed, they never even laid a, they never even laid the keel down. They've been talking about that one since I was a child, and now I'm like an adult. <laughs> they're not, they're never building a Titanic too. Um, hello, Gabe from Mississippi, and finally, Linda says uh, that she remembers the gorgeous pillar on promenade deck. Yep, that was from the first class main restaurant. So. All right, folks, I'm going to end the live stream right here. Thank you guys so much. This is just the first episode of many to come because there there will be other live streams like this. But if you join me for Saturday, the, the next Saturday, the 16th, and make sure it is. Yeah, Saturday, the 16th um, at 2 p.m. Pacific time. So uh, so about three hours before I started it today, I'm going to be joined by Stephen Ablonsi from QMI. And what we're going to talk about is abandoned areas of the Queen Mary. We're going to start a new series all about abandoned areas of the Queen Mary. And so on Saturday, 
we have scheduled one to talk about the Queen Mary's restaurants. So the first class restaurant, the second class, and the third class restaurant, what they looked like back then, what they look like today, what's inside of them, and how they've been used all these years while at Long Beach. And, you know, and Steve is a wealth of knowledge. He's got so many memories of working on the Queen Mary while it was in Long Beach, you know, and he's got just so much knowledge and stuff about these spaces. So we're going to get into the 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 nitty gritty of these three spaces on our deck and it's going to be so cool it's going to be part of an, again another series where we will show you guys abandoned places on the queen mary and queen elizabeth um and what these places were like so yeah tune in on saturday for that i already have it scheduled so you guys can just click the set reminder button for that um yeah so anyway thank you guys for joining me and Next time I get the chance to do a, a live stream like this, just one on one with you guys, I will. But anyway, thanks all. Thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.